Is marriage an institution? In the series on talks, this is an important aspect. Let me start where your understanding is as regards the marriage is concerned. Only then insights of a Buddha can be of any benefit to you. These talks are based on certain questions asked by the seekers on marriage and related aspects, marriage and importance of sex in marriage from time to time. The question that is asked, Hindus consider marriage as an institution, a religious sacrament, while for Muslims it is a social contract. Marriage is considered an institution in every human culture, although the form and rules differ. Yet still marriage always remains an institution and involves some form of legality, legally legitimized sexual relation, always involves some form of legally legitimized sexual relationship. Traditionally, Marriages have had a religious basis. We are born as a spiritual entity, but this we have forgotten. So the journey has to begin from where you are. You are at the level of the body. You are at the level of emotions and mind. At that level, there are numerous desires, unfulfilled, so journey has to begin from there. Whether it is implicit or explicit, but the importance has to be on the base level. If the fulfillment does not happen at the level of the physical, then by the time your energies begin to deplete, this baser cannot be transformed into precious. In the modern day industrialized West, marriage is based on a legal contract. In the Bible and other religions as well, women always occupied an inferior social status to the nearest male relation, fathers, brothers and husbands. Marriages were usually arranged Marriages were usually arranged in the Bible and according to Hindus by the parents. However, now the trend is fast changing at such a speed that it is difficult to cope with. Marriage is a social union or legal contract between people that creates kinship. It is an institution in which it is an institution in which interpersonal relationships, usually intimate and sexual, are acknowledged in a variety of ways. Depending on the culture or in which it is found, such a union, often formalized via a wedding ceremony, may also be called matrimony. People marry for different reasons, including one and more of the following, legal, social, emotional, economic, spiritual or religious. These might include arranged marriages, family obligations, and legal establishments of nuclear family unit, the legal protection of children and public declaration of commitment. The act of marriage usually creates normative or legal obligations between the individuals involved. In certain societies, 
these obligations also extend to certain family members of the married persons. Some cultures allow the dissolution of marriage through divorce or annulment. Marriage is usually recognized by the state, a religious authority or both. It is often viewed as a contract. Civil marriage is the legal concept of marriage as a governmental institution irrespective of religious affiliations in accordance with marriage law of the jurisdiction. Biblical marriage. In the Bible, the relationship between Israel and God is likened to that of a marriage, one based upon one based upon covenant between two unequal parties. The marriage between Israel and God was expected to be monogamous and mutual faithfulness was required from both sides. Otherwise the relationship might be ended. There are various types of marriages. In Judaism, a levirate marriage involves a widow marrying her brother-in-law. The Latin word for levier is the equivalent of the Hebrew yabam, which means brother-in-law. What is muta is the word for a temporary marriage. A recently Humorously, a word was coined, a caretaker husband, a caretaker marriage. Muta is the word for a temporary marriage, the duration of which is stipulated by contract. Only traveler Shia recognize Muta marriages, although evidence suggests that it was practiced by many before Islam appeared. Muta marriages continue to be legal in some Muslim areas, but they are denounced by many orthodox clerics as little more than formalized prostitution. And indeed, a Muta marriage might be limited to just a night or a few hours. What is polygamy? Polygamy is any marriage which involves more than two people. Polyandry involves one woman and multiple husbands, while polygamy involves one man and multiple wives. Polygamy used to be common in the ancient world and was supposed was supported in most religions. Polygamy is obviously endorsed in Bible, but it is unclear to what degree it might have been limited to the upper levels of the society. Monogamy seems to have become a standard by the Roman era and is practiced by all the religions except Islam where marrying up to nine women is permitted under certain conditions. The word bigamy comes from the Greek bis, which means two, and gamus means marriage. Legally, it refers to the act of contract, contracting a marriage when one is already married. In church tradition, however, it was, it has also been used when a person contracts a valid marriage after the death of the first spouse. Although this position is not currently reflected in civil law, concubines, however, were traditionally accepted in the earliest Bible stories. What is endogamy? 
it is the practice in tribal groups limiting marriage to members of the group and prohibiting marriage outside the group that is exogamy. Endogamy is more common in socially stratified societies and most common among aristocratic and ruling classes. European royalty traditionally limited marriage to other members of royalty and denigrated marriage to commoners, even if of the same nationality. The purpose of endogamy is to preserve the purity of bloodliness which might become polluted. Exogamy is the practice of the tribal group which limit marriage only to the members outside of the tribal group and prohibit marriage inside the group. Of course, the definition of what actually constitutes one's own group varies widely. Although there is some universal agreement that this group includes a member of immediate family, parents, children and spouses. Endogamy appears to have been the practice in earliest biblical narratives and in tribes and also in certain communities in India. Most of the present day marriages are exogamy. In certain South Indian traditions, mother's brother has the first right on his sister's daughter for marriage. So the traditions differ from society to society. In Muslim tradition, marrying the cousin is not a problem. A general definition of marriage is that it is a social contract between two individuals. Marriage in, unites their lives legally, economically and emotionally. Being married also gives legitimacy to sexual relation within the marriage framework. Marriage is considered an institution, however, it is different than an educational institution. As an institution, marriage aims at creating a structure or mechanism of social order and cooperation governing the behavior of a set of individuals within a given human community. Marriage as institution is identified with a social purpose and permanence, transcending individual human lives and intentions and with the making and enforcing of rules governing cooperative human behavior. The term institution is commonly applied to customs and behavior patterns important to a society as well as to particular formal organizations of government and public service. However, the institution of marriage is different than an educational institution. In educational institution, you enter to learn and at the end of the term, you graduate from one standard to another and finally, you graduate from the school, college and the university. You obtain degrees, credentials and honors. Nothing like this happens in the institution of marriage. You enter the institution of marriage, but you remain for life long in a standard one and never graduate. Unlike educational institution, there is a system. There is a system, there is a curriculum, 
own learning process or grading system. You remain stumbling in the institution without any growth. Through this institution, you do not learn even the basic tenets of life and living. That comes only when you enter the institution of meditation. When meditation, that is the missing dimension, is added to your institution of marriage, the growth begins to happen. You are grow on various levels. There is a curriculum of emotional studies, curriculum of personal needs, anger and things like these. You learn how to deal with these, not overcome, understand their nature. In that very process of understanding, you transcend. Without meditation, the progress in the institution of marriage cannot. You remain at a standard one. Generally, through this institution of marriage, you do not learn even the basic tenets of life and living. But when the dimension of marriage is added to it, understanding begins to dawn. You grow into various aspects of it, emotionality, understanding the nature of relationship. This institution of marriage, as it is called, begins with great expectations, but nothing happens. Hindus consider it a religious sacrament. Each marriage begins with a standard one, which the body realm, where sex remains predominant, you remain engrossed in sex, standard one, throughout and never graduate to the next standard of love. In marriage, when Hindus get married, the girl is considered an embodiment of Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and prosperity, and boy is considered an incarnation of Vishnu. This is aspiration. But there is no way how this aspiration can be achieved. In marriage, sex remains the standard one. When you graduate from standard one, only then you enter into the next standard of love. And with that, your journey continues. What you call love is in reality illusion, a bargain. You give love, I give you love. But the mathematics, the economics of love is totally different. It is simply a sharing. A sharing my presence. I am not giving you anything. I am just overflowing an understanding out of love for your deep interest in the process of growth. That is a sharing. I do not expect anything from you. But in marriage, in a male-female relation, expectation becomes very high and expectations are never fulfilled. So it remains, love remains an illusion. In reality, it is lust in the garb of love. This is how life begins. There is nothing wrong about it. One should not be guilty about it. No marriage is free from this stage. However, the process of marriage entails that one day you graduate from the standard of lust and enter into a standard of love. Unless you transcend beyond the quicksand of dust, lust and enter the next stage of love, when lower emotions are sanctified, you remain stuck there in the standard one. Ghalib says, Dil ka kalb ho jana. Dil means the biological heart and kalb means the spiritual heart where love predominates.
and you explore the reservoir of love deep within you. The moment you attain to that state when love begins to overflow in myriad ways. For that, sometimes I have to use tricks. Yes, I use the word tricks to let someone involve in one thing or the other. Explore the creativity. Explore the inner potential of the person. Remind him or her of his inner potential and allow one to grow into the potential that comes naturally to the person. Through this, you can enter into crossover from standard one to standard two. As you go through day after day, lower emotions like anger, lust, greed, jealousy, etc. begin to dissolve because meditation brings a greater understanding. Association of the one who is meditative, who is an embodiment of light, begins to get a deeper understanding about these aspects. You attain to freedom from your lower nature. And unless this happens, journey through the higher realm is not possible. I have made a change in the process. The earlier masters said that along the path First of all, the seeker has to go through the stages of nafs, lower emotions. I simplified it and simply introduce those aspects which are common with you, which you understand and where you are. The journey has to begin where you are and from there you have to continue. When someone asks me the direction to my house, how can you give the direction to your place? The person may be coming from east to west, north, south or from any direction. You have to ask the person, where are you right now? And wherever the person says, I am, then you start giving the direction. If a person is coming from east, the direction will be different to the one who is coming from the west. And when a person is coming from north, the directions to him will differ from that of south or east or west or any other direction. First of all, this is a simple act. I have filtered into the physical or from the physical to the spiritual because there is a bridge. Anyone asks how to reach to your place? Where are you at the moment? Person tells me, okay, from there you start giving the direction. This is how the teaching, the training has to be. When a sheikh sees where the person is, where the person in the process of training has got stuck, from there he begins to lift the seeker and bring you from different stages. When you transcend these lower emotions, you enter the realm of love. In the first stage, love is freed from lust, and you continue through various stages of love. These are the nine stages, nine mukamas according to the Sufi masters. And then when you are about to graduate, you realize love too has transcended. It has now transformed into compassion. 
Instead of love, there is tremendous compassion. Compassion for the people who need love, who need care. When you graduate from realm of love or the mind, then for the first time you experience your beingness, the new, the light that you are. You experience your cosmic nature. But if you start finding that the diamond mine is good, you are stuck at that level. If you find the gold mine is good and you are exploring gold, you are mistaken. The Sufi knew all about these mines, the copper, the silver, the gold, the diamond. Yet still he is not moved, he is sitting under the tree. He is not moved because he knows there is something more precious than the diamond mine. You experience the cosmic nature. You come to realize that you are not the body, not the mind. Instead you are ever expanding consciousness. You transcend the memory intellect, ego sense and heart, the four aspects of the mind. You get the taste of your cosmic nature. It's still fruition is far. But you graduate from this realm of consciousness. The individual consciousness merges into cosmic consciousness. The fruition begins. You ultimately graduate or you transcend beyond the realm of marriage. You can remain there, but marriage or the sex becomes immaterial. And according to Carl Gustav Jung, by the time one attains the age of 40, if this does not happen, then you cannot attain to that. Because by then the physical energies begin to deplete. By 40 you are at the peak. And after that the descent begins. If you have reached peak to the peak full of energy, then your descent will be very good. Otherwise reaching at the peak you are still stumbling. This is the ultimate and once you have reached this state, you are enlightened. You have attained to the bodiless consciousness. You have attained freedom, the ultimate. You have choice. You can choose the next life and the parents as well then. Your actions will not bind you anymore because these are offered onto the existence and understand. You understand that you are an actor. You are acting a role as a master, as a disciple, as this and that and so on and so forth. When an actor performs the role in the disguise of the character that has been given to him to perform, he is not responsible. That is why when the Indian actor who has acted more than hundreds of films but in most of the films his role was that of a villain and in each role he performed with totally a different kind of dexterity. His dialogue delivery, the way he smokes and makes the curls out of the smoke that comes out of the cigarette differs. That dexterity he used in his character and in his personal life he is considered to be one of the most honest and sincere and just opposite to the characters that he has performed. And in performing that roles when you look at his pictures, it looks like a very cunning kind of a look he gives. Sometimes he gives a, a cunning kind of a smile. 
but that is how he performed his role on the stage. But in real life, he was a totally different person. His name, he is no more alive physically. His name is on the Indian movies known as Pran. Pran Sikand was his name. Totally different kind of person. For his living, he has to perform a kind of rule that each script expects him to perform differently his attire, his gestures, mannerisms, his walk, everything differs. And when you understand this, this is why I say acting is one of the most beautiful spiritual dimension. I know that I have no father, no mother, no brother, no sister, but yet is still on this this is stage of world where I am. I have to perform these roles so that through my acting I can bring about transformation into those people. The person who is your mother he is the mother in this episode of the drama of life. Life is a drama. Life is an act on which we come to act our parts. And if you perform, just as an actor, you perform your role efficiently, that the audience cannot differentiate between the reality and the acting, you are upgraded to a higher standard. You graduate. You are given a different kind of a role. This person is very versatile, he can perform any kind of act on the stage. And in every act he looks very real. In the same way, in existence, you are, your roles keeps on changing. Your actions will not bind you anymore. For the first time you will experience that actions are like dried leaves that grow on the tree of consciousness. Just as New foliage comes on a tree. With the passage of time, the leaves turn yellow. Autumn comes, the autumn of life. In the life of the tree comes. The season of autumn has come in the life of the tree. The leaves turn gold. Then they fall in preparation for the next season. For the first time you will experience that actions are like dried leaves that grow on the tree of consciousness. Nothing binds you anymore. This is the stage, the ultimate graduation from the institution of marriage through this way, the state of Buddhahood. And then your next life will be a life of awareness from birth and that will be your last embodied life. To attain to this, you have to be totally aware and enter into various aspects of marriage. Meditatively, consciously, knowingly that you are performing your roles. You are an actor in this stage of life. Be meditative, and when you are meditative in the process of love making, it will transform you. It will take you very easily to the next stage. And if you do not have that opportunity, you have knowingly or unknowingly out of ignorance have abandoned the relations. I am not asking anyone to enter into relationship. That is, that is your individual decision. But you can go into the past relation and meditatively enter into those moments when love was at its peak. You can understand the process of transformation when you have to enter into that relation 
that situation, that circumstance, be meditative. Your love and meditation will transform that situation and bring you out of that situation even if it comes in future. Only this much for the first question. And now still there is a second question which I will take in tomorrow's session.